the truth about the Alexandrian texts and their apocrypha books that come from the land of Egypt. The oracles of God are committed to the Jews. Romans 3, 1 and 2. What advantage then have the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly, because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Jews are Hebrews from the seed of Abraham. 2 Corinthians 11.22 Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. The oracles of God are in the book of the Lord that are written holy scriptures. Isaiah 34.16 Seek ye out of the book of of the Lord and read no one of these shall fail none shall want her mate for my mouth it hath commanded and his spirit it hath gathered them the book of the Lord contains the gospel of God promised to all mankind by God in the holy scriptures Romans 1 1 and 2 Paul a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. The Holy Ghost moved on holy men of God that were Hebrew. The men spake, and they wrote what God said down. 2 Peter 1 2021 knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost the Lord God Almighty says that his words are pure tried purified seven times and preserved for all generations. Psalms 12, 6, 7. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Therefore, we have a perfect and preserved book of the Lord in this generation today. The perfect preservation is called the Holy Bible, first printed in 1611 AD. How do we know? One, every book, chapter, and verse is written down as God moved on a holy man that spake that was a Hebrew. Two, the 400 plus revised version Bibles just in the English language alone all contain in both the Old and New Testament Alexandrian and other Egyptian texts in their scriptures and their apocryphal books that come from the land of Egypt. The biggest giveaway that the Alexandrian and other Egyptian texts with the apocryphal books that come out of the land of Egypt are not the perfect and preserved book of the Lord are found in their mistakes, contradictions, missing words, missing verses, and wrong words. Case in point. The NIV contains Alexandrian and other Egyptian texts all from the land of Egypt as do the other 400 plus revised virgin Bibles in English with this verse. Mark 1-2 from the NIV as it is written in Isaiah the prophet. I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. But when you study and rightly divide the truth 
we find this is a lie. Malachi 3.1 from the NIV. I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come, says the Lord Almighty. Uh-oh, Isaiah didn't say that. Malachi said that. The translators and publishers know this, but they promote and sell these fake Bibles to churches, Bible institutions, and the public anyway. Here's the proof from their own preference. The Committee on Bible Translation, September 2010. Quote, the committee has again been reminded that every human effort is flawed including this revision of the NIV, end quote. This is what you call caught red-handed and trying to cover your behind, just like they do with all of those footnotes they place in their Bibles when you read them, and it leaves you not knowing what to believe. The footnotes say things like this. This verse or this word is not found in the oldest, most reliable manuscripts. The Alexandrian texts and the Apocrypha books all come from the land of Egypt. The word Apocrypha means writings and reports that are not genuine. Not genuine means fake. Educated men after the rudiments of the world changed the oracles of God with their own philosophies, vain deceit, and writings that brought these corrupted scriptures out of the land of Egypt into the halls of the Vatican and into the 400 plus English language Egyptian revised Bibles up to this very day. The apostles, as early as the first century, warned us about this. Galatians 2.8 Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy, philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Here are the culprits. Philo of Alexandria, Egypt, 30 BC to 50 AD. Philo infused Greek philosophy into the Torah, the five Hebrew books of Moses. Sources, Hillard, Marion, Philo of Alexandria, Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy, Retrieved, 9-11-2018. Philo also had the opportunity and motive to forge the letter of Aristeus, which claims the Hebrew scriptures were translated into the Greek Septuagint LXX in 285 BC. Other than the letter of Aristeus, there is no proof of a BC Greek Septuagint. There is no proof of Aristeus or his brother Philocrates either, who Aristeus is supposed to be writing to. Aristeus presented himself in this letter as a pagan admirer of Judaism who supposedly held a position in the court of Ptolemy II Philadelphia, 285-246 to B.C., in Alexandria, Egypt. The scholars call this a letter because it is addressed to his brother, but in reality it is a 233 page book. Even the Bible scholars call this a 
pseudopigrapha work. Pseudopigrapha means spurious or synonymous writings. Spurious means fake. The writer used current Hellenistic literary conventions and the technical language of the Alexandrian court. But his Greek style and several historical inaccuracies indicate that he was a deliberate archivist. His concern for the welfare of Jewish slaves, his romantic picture of Palestinian Jewry, and his efforts to explain the theory behind Jewish dietary laws mark him as a Jew rather than a pagan. www.britannica.com topic letter of Aristeus is the source. Pantanius of Alexandria, Egypt, 100 to 160 AD, a Stoic. The Stoics, along with the Epicurees, considered the Apostle Paul a babbler. Acts 1718. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him. And some said, what will this babbler say? Others, some, he seemed to be a setter forth of strange gods because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. They mocked the resurrection of the dead, Acts 17, 32. And they, and when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked and others said, we will hear thee again of this matter. Yet Pantanius of Alexandria was a significant figure at the Catechological School of Alexandria from around 180 AD. This school was the earliest catechological school and became influential in the development of Christian theology. The sources, Alvin Butler, Paul Burns, Butler's Lives of the Saints, Volume 7, A and C, Black, page 48. Clement of Alexandria, Egypt, 150 to 215 AD, taught at the Catechetical School of Alexandria and was influenced by Plato and the Stoics. He was the teacher of origin. His philosophy of purification after death eventually led to the invention of purgatory. Sources, The Birth of Purgatory, University of Chicago Press, 1984. Page 52, ISBN 978-022-6470-832. To say a few words about the two Greek inventors of Purgatory, Clement of Alexandria. Tertullian of Carthage, Tanzania, 155 to 225 AD. He did not come from Alexandria, Egypt, but he took it upon himself more than 100 years after the Holy Scriptures were completed by John in 95 AD to add the doctrine of the Trinity. This is why Trinity is not in the Holy Scriptures because it was added by a non-Jew 100 years after the Holy Scriptures were complete. The source, Tuggy, Dale, and Zalta. Edward N., E.D., 216-2016. History of Trinitarian Doctrines, the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, Stanford University, Retrieved, 24th September 2016. Origin of Alexandria, Egypt, 185 to 254 AD, was the ringleader and the main reason why all of this Gnostic, Platonist, Stoic, and Greek philosophy corruptions are written in the Alexandrian text, also known today as critical text. Origin was the student of Clement of Alexandria the Platonist, 
and Stoic sympathize. Origen significantly, significantly developed the doctrine of the Trinity, a philosophy started by Tertullian. Origen was among the first to add the Holy Spirit to the Godhead. Origen took all the Greek philosophies, Platonism, Neoplatonism, Stoic, and Gnostic apologies, and put them all together into his writings of the Hebrew and Greek Bible scriptures. This became known as the Hexapla. It consists of seven columns, with the first column being the Hebrew scriptures that he had available at that time. The second column being the transliteration, conversion of a text from one script to another, Hebrew into the Greek. The third column called Aquila, being the most literal Greek translation of the Hebrew into the Greek. The fourth column called Shemachus, being a more loose or paraphrased Greek translation of the Hebrew into the Greek. The fifth column called LXX, the Greek Septuagint, which is the majority of the Greek Old and New Testament Bible scriptures used in the 400 plus revised version Bibles today. This is where the Apocrypha and Pseudopigrapha books come from. In the Protestant Revised Bibles, the UBS, and the Vatican that supervises all Revised Bible translations chose to remove the Apocrypha and the Pseudopigrapha books unless they are requested. Remember, the Jews who God has committed the oracles of God have no Apocrypha or Pseudopigrapha books or any Greek scripture books in the Hebrew Holy Scriptures. The sixth column called Theodosia, being the most loose or paraphrased Greek translation of the Hebrew into Greek. The seventh column called Variants, being a form or version of something that differs in some respect from other forms of the same thing or from a standard. The sources, Prestige, GL, 1940, Origin, or The Claims of Religious Intelligence, PDF, Fathers and Heretics, Bampton Lectures, London, SBCK, page 43, retrieved 4th of September, 2009. The manuscripts in the Catholic English Language Bible first printed in 1610 A.D. called the Douay Reims Bible used the same Vaticanus manuscripts that are in the Revised Standard Bible first printed in 1881 A.D. In fact, Revised Bibles since 1881 A.D including the most popular version in 2020 AD, the New International Version, NIV, also uses the same manuscripts that are in the 400 plus Revised Version Bibles in the English language alone. The manuscripts in the 400 plus English Protestant Revised Version Bibles, the Catholic Latin Vulgate, the Catholic Dewey Reims English Bible and all other Catholic version Bibles come from the land of Egypt. The 400 plus English revised version Bibles all have their codices, unicals, capital letter only text, and papyri come from the land of Egypt. Here are the manuscripts used to make the 400 plus English Revised Version Bibles. Codex Sinaiticus, Mount Sinai, Egypt. Codex Alexandrinus, Alexandria, Egypt. Codex Vanicanus, Alexandria, Egypt. 
Unico 0220, Cairo, Egypt, Unico 016, Oxyronicus, Egypt, Unico 0206, Oxyronicus, Egypt, Amherst, Papyri, Egypt, Bodmer, Papyri, Papo, Egypt, Chester B, Papyri, Fayum or Aphrodite Polis, Egypt, Michigan Papyri, Egypt, Oxyronicus Papyri, Oxyronicus, Egypt, Rylands Papyri, Egypt, Miscellaneous Papyri, P2, Egypt, P4, Coptos, Egypt, P6, Egypt, P7, Egypt, P8, Egypt, P12, Egypt, P14, Mount Sinai, Egypt, P25, Egypt, P33, Equal 58, Egypt, P34, Egypt, P35, Egypt, P36, Egypt, P40, Egypt, P41, Egypt, P43, Egypt, P44, Egypt, P48, Egypt, P49, Egypt, P50, Egypt, P52, Egypt, P53, Egypt, P54, Egypt, P55, Egypt, P56, Egypt, P57, Egypt, P59, Egypt, P60, Egypt, P61, Egypt, P62, Egypt, P63, Egypt, P64 equals 67, Coptos, Egypt, P65, Egypt, P68, Egypt, P76, Egypt, P79, Egypt, P80, Egypt, P81, Egypt, P82, Egypt, P83, Egypt, P84, Egypt, P85, Egypt, P86, Egypt, P88, Egypt, P89, Egypt, P592, Fayum, Egypt. Common sense is good. Bible sense is better. If you think it takes one God to say 400 plus different things in the same language, then you lack both common sense and Bible sense. Come on, man. The devil is conning you. The 400 plus revised version fake Bibles is all about making a buck. Here's the source. On page 45 of the introduction of the Nessos Allen Greek New Testament, Novum Testamentum Grace Allen, 27th edition states, the text shared by these two editions was adopted internationally by Bible societies and following an agreement between the Vatican and the United Bible Societies, it has served for the basis for translations and revisions made under their supervision. Hmm. Here you can use common sense. What in the world is the Vatican doing supervising Protestant Bible translations? Come on, man. Money, 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 money. The Pope getting paid. The Protestants coming back to the Pope for a one world religion just in time for the man of sin to come on in. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, and 4. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called 
God or that is worship so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. 400 plus different revised Bibles and you don't need but one. This is why they preach against you paying tax. Because this is where the real money is at. They go and get a PhD, write a fake book from fake revised version Bibles, get you to buy the fake revised version Bibles, get you to buy their fake books that they release once a month, all while getting you to rob God in tithes and offerings, helping the devil put folks in hell coming and going, making folks thieves in the temple. Lord have mercy. Finally, there ain't but one book of the Lord. Isaiah 34, 16. Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read, no one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it have commanded, and his spirit it have gathered them. In English, it's called the Holy Bible. It was first printed for English tongue speaking and reading folks in 1611 A.D. Isaiah 28, 10, 11. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, and there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. The book of the Lord was first given to mankind from Mount Sinai, Acts 7.38. This is he that was in the church, in the wilderness, with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai, and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. The children of Israel being in the wilderness were not in Egypt when they received the book of the Lord. Exodus 13, 18. But God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea and the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. Exodus 31, 18. And he gave unto Moses when he had made an end of communion with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone written with the finger of God. We know they were not in the land of Egypt when they received the oracles of God because Mount Sinai is in Arabia. Galatians 4.25 For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and answereth to Jerusalem which now is and is in bondage with her children. The Hebrew Moses took the children of Israel to Moab and finished writing the law. Deuteronomy 29 1. These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel in the land of Moab beside the covenant which he made with them in Horeb. Deuteronomy 31, 24. And it came to pass when Moses had made an end of writing the words of this law in a book until they were finished. Another Hebrew, Joshua, picked up the pen of holy inspiration in Shechem and finished the book of the law and God had him write a book 
after his own name. Joshua 24, 25, 26. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and set them a statue and a ordinance in Shechem. And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God and took a great stone and set it up there under an oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. The Holy Ghost moved the Hebrew Samuel, the seer, who became Samuel the prophet, that judged Israel to write Judges, Ruth, and what we have in the Holy Bible as most of 1 Samuel in Naoth. 1 Samuel 10, 25. Then Samuel told the people the manner of the kingdom and wrote it in a book and laid it before the Lord. And Samuel sent all the people away, every man to his house. 1 Samuel 19, 22. Then went he also to Ramah and came to a great well that is in Shuchu. And he asked and said, Where are Samuel and David? And one said, Behold, they be at Neoth in Ramah. The Holy Ghost moved the Hebrews, Nathan the prophet, and Gad the seer, to complete the book of Samuel, which in English is divided up into 1st and 2nd Samuel in Jerusalem. 1st Chronicles 29, 29 and 30. Now the acts of David the king, the first and last, behold, they are written in the book of Samuel the seer, and in the book of Nathan the prophet, and in the book of Gad the seer, with all his reign and his might and the times that went over him and over Israel and over all the kingdoms of the countries. The Holy Ghost moved Hebrews to write the Psalms by the Hebrew King David in Jerusalem, the Hebrews Moses and Korah in Moab, the Hebrews Asa, Heman, and Ethan, the Ezraites, and the Hebrew King Solomon in Jerusalem. The Holy Ghost moved the Hebrew King Solomon to write the Proverbs, Ecclesiastics, the Song of Psalms, which is Solomon's in Jerusalem. Ecclesiastes 1 and 1. The words of the preacher, the Song of David, King of Jerusalem. The Holy Ghost moved the Hebrew prophet Jeremiah to write the book of Jeremiah and Lamentations in Jerusalem. Jeremiah 36, 32. Then took Jeremiah another road and gave it to Baruch the scribe, the son of Nera, who wrote therein from the mouth of Jeremiah all the words of the book which Joachim, king of Judah, had burned in the fire and they were added besides unto them many like words. The Holy Ghost moved Ezra, the Hebrew, to write the book of the Kings, the book of the Chronicles, which are first and second Kings and Chronicles in English. Ezra wrote the book of Ezra and most of Nehemiah in Babylon and Jerusalem. The Holy Ghost moved the Hebrew Nehemiah to write the end of the book of Nehemiah in Jerusalem. 2 Chronicles 36 and 8. Now the rest of the acts of Joachim and his abominations, which he did, and that which was found in him, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. And Joachim, his son, reigned in his stead. Ezra 7, 9. For upon the first day of the first month began he to go up from Babylon, and on the first day of the fifth month came he to Jerusalem, according to the good hand of his God upon him. Ezra 7:14. For as much 
as they are sent of the king and of his seven counselors to inquire concerning Judah and Jerusalem according to the law of thy God which is in thy hand. Nehemiah 13, 6, 7. But in all this time was not I at Jerusalem, for in the two and thirtieth year of Artaxerxes, king of Babylon, came I unto the king, and after certain days obtained I leave of the king, and I came to Jerusalem and understood of the evil of Eliashib did for Tobiah in preparing him a chamber in the courts of the house of God. The Holy Ghost moved the Hebrew Mordecai, the Jew, to write the book of Esther in Persia, Esther 10, 2, and all the acts of his power and of his might and the declaration of the greatness of Mordecai, whereunto the king advanced him, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Media and Persia? The Holy Ghost moved the other Hebrew prophets to write the other books in the book of the Lord, the book of Isaiah in Judah, Isaiah 41 and 2, the book of Ezekiel in Babylon, Ezekiel 1 and 3. The book of Daniel in Babylon. Daniel 1, 2, 6, 7. The book of Hosea in Israel. Hosea 1, 1. The book of Joel in Judah. Joel 2, 32. The book of Amos in Israel. Amos 1, and one. The book of Obadiah in Judah, Obadiah 1.20. The book of Jonah in Israel, 2 Kings 14.25. The book of Micah in Judah, Jeremiah 26.18. The book of Nahum in Israel, Nahum 1.1. 1, 1. The book of Habakkuk in Judah, Habakkuk 319. The book of Zephaniah in Judah, Zephaniah 1 and 1. The book of Haggai in Judah, Ezra 5 1. The book of Zechariah in Judah, Ezra 5 1. The book of Malachi in Judah, Malachi 2 11. The Holy Ghost moved on Hebrew holy men to write the New Testament scriptures of Jesus Christ, our Lord, that were all accumulated in Antioch, Syria. Acts 13, 1 through 3. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene, and Manoah, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fast, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fast and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. The Holy Scriptures were published to the world from the Antioch church members. Acts 13 49. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. The Holy Scriptures from the book of the Lord that the Holy Ghost moved were all Hebrew men. The church in Antioch, Syria accumulated the books and published them to the world. Acts 11.22 Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church which was in Jerusalem and they sent for Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch. 
Acts 11, 25 through 27. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch. The holy scriptures that were accumulated in Antioch, Syria, by the church are the Gospel of Matthew, the Jew, written from Antioch, the Gospel of Mark, the Jew, written from Antioch, the Gospel of Luke, the Greek Jew, written from Antioch, the Gospel of John, the Jew, written from Ephesus, the Book of Acts, written by the Greek Jew from Rome, the Apostles of Paul, the Jew, written from Jerusalem, Corinth, Ephesus, and Rome, the Epistles of Peter, the Jew, written from Babylon, the Epistles of John, the Jew, written from Ephesus, the epistles of James, the Jew, written from Jerusalem, the epistles of Jude, the Jew, written from Asia, the revelation of Jesus Christ, written by John, the Jew, from the Isle of Patmos, the manuscripts in the Holy Bible, first printed in 1611 AD, authorized by King James Stewart, are the most complete preservation in English in the history of mankind which are the oracles of God preserved in the English tongue. Preserved in the Hebrew Masoretic text for the Old Testament. Preserved in the Syriac Masoretic text in the Old Testament in the books of 2 Kings 18.26, Ezra 4.7, Isaiah 36.11, and Daniel 24 or 2 and 4. Preserved in the Greek Antioch text for the New Testament with portions preserved in the Syriac Antioch text in the New Testament in the book portions Matthew 5 22 Matthew 27 46 Mark 5 41 Mark 7 34 Mark 10 51 Mark 14 36 John 1 42 John 20 16 Acts 936 and 40 Romans 815 1 Corinthians 1622 Galatians 4 6 as transliterated Greek and John 5 2 John 1913 17 and 20 John 20 16 Acts 21.40, Acts 22.2, Acts 26.14 as Syriac. Note, each of these verses are translated as Syrian or Chaldee in English. Syriac is called Hebrew in the New Testament since it was from the tongue of the Hebrews. In 1611 AD, the Syriac Chaldean Oriental languages were called Hebrew. In 2020 AD, scholars called the Syriac Chaldean Oriental languages Aramaic. Antioch is in Syria. This is to tell you all 
what is happening and why it is happening. The Lord God has one book of the Lord. Isaiah 34, 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them. One book of the Lord. It don't mate with nobody. It's not like any other book. There can't be 400 plus books of the Lord. That Ashton hasn't have a mate. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. For the Lord God promised he would put his precepts, which are his commands. If you love me, keep my commandments. That's what Jesus Christ says in John 14, 15. That's what precepts are, commands. God promised he would put his precepts in another language tongue for the people. We have it in English. Isaiah 28, 10, 11. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, for with stammer lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. Yet a small number that escape the sword shall return out of the land of Egypt into the land of Judah. And all the remnant of Judah, like the Philos of Alexandria, that Jew, and other Jews that stayed in Egypt, tampering with the scriptures, taking this out, putting that in, taking this in, putting that out, changing, alternating, editing, scrabbling out, mutilating the holy scriptures. You can see the mutilations today when you read the scriptures. You can go to Matthew 17, 21, and this can come out not by, by fast and by prayer and fasting. But there is no prayer and fasting in it. It just, it come out by prayer. Prayer what? Oh, we just ripped that out. Ain't no fast. And all things created by God. Uh huh. And what else? And in Ephesians 3 9, they ripped out by Jesus Christ. They took by Jesus Christ out. Oh, we don't believe that. Just take that out. And then in Acts 3 13, his servant Jesus. Wait a minute. What happened to his son, Jesus? Oh, no, he ain't the son of God. We just take that out. And folks, reading these Bibles and just thinking that, like, this is the word of God. It's in my language. I, it can, I can read it. It ain't that old archaic word. It's the new word. Lord have mercy. New word with corruptions. Jesus Christ is the son of God. You got him as the servant of God. Lord have mercy. But that's what those Jews that went back. And this is what that scripture says. Yet a small number that escaped the sword shall return out of the land of Egypt into the land of Judah. This is the prophecy. And then the prophecy goes on. And all the remnant of Judah that are gone into the land of Egypt to sojourn there, they're going to stay there in Egypt anyway, shall know whose word shall stand, mine or theirs. Hmm. The most complete English preservation of the Holy Scriptures is the Holy Bible, authorized by King James Stewart, which is the complete English preservation of the book of the Lord. Jesus Christ is coming back. We're running out of time to be obedient to God. Repent and believe the gospel. Hebrews 5, 9. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the light of the gospel that shows us the truth, that gives us the evidence so that we have proof and we're able to prove all things. To thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path.
Save them, Lord. Save souls. Let them be obedient to your word. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen.